So this is just going to be a very quick video on how to use the textures in my landscape pack that I created and released. So um, if you haven't grabbed it yet, uh, check out either my blog or my YouTube channel or wherever. There's a link there and you can have a look at it. If you're watching this video, um, because I've included it into the pack, just uh, make sure everything's unzipped and you can follow along. So um, I've got a very basic scene here with a very simple HDR loaded in. There's nothing in there yet. I'm just going to create a plane very quickly. Scale it up 10 times. And there we go. If I hit render very quickly, you'll see that uh, it's just a white plane and there's just some basic lighting going on. So I want to touch on one or two things and just show you how to use some of these textures and especially just how to set up the micro displacement with them. So I'm going to go back out of rendered view, create a new material. I'm just going to leave this set to white because we don't really need to do anything with it right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a math node over here, set it to multiply and stick it in the displacement slot. Uh, and I'm going to bring in an image texture. So I'm going to pipe the color in there, hit open, and we'll grab the uh, Mesa 1 displacement. And these displacement files, uh, files are actually 16-bit, so um, they shouldn't give you any banding in most cases uh, because they're a nice and high bit depth, um, just in case you were wondering. So first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to hit render, and you'll see that it sort of almost it doesn't show up and there's a very good reason for this and it's a very typical one actually. If we go out of rendered view and go into top view and hit five to go into isometric view, what I'm gonna do is hit, uh, go into edit mode and hit U and project from view. Um, especially project from view uh, bounds will now project the, uh, the entire polygon from one corner to the other and we'll get a nice flat planar UV, which is exactly what we need to display the textures. So. Going back out there, uh, if we again hit render, there you go. You'll see that um, it's sort of starting to show up a little bit. I can increase the value here if I just really exaggerate. You'll see the bump map uh, is doing its work, but we want this to be displacement, obviously. So I know I can set these values up fairly high for most of these renders. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just set up my material over here, make sure this is set to true. And what I need to do now first is add a little, uh, add a few subdivisions in. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to hit W in edit mode, subdivide it, hit W, subdivide again, and now I'm going to set it to 100. Um, generally, I found if you do some of the subdivision up front uh, and the subsurf modifier, which I'm actually going to add now, that does the adaptive subdivision, doesn't need to do all the work. Generally, you get slightly better results. Now, I know that I can get away with this because um, I know I've done a bunch of these landscapes and I know exactly how much can fit on my GPU. So I know that this works for me. You might want to tone down the subdivisions a little bit if you're having a hard time rendering things or switch over to CPU uh, if you've got enough RAM to go that route. So that being said, adaptive subdivision is enabled. I've set my material to true. So now um, if your obviously if your feature set is set to experimental in Blender 2.78 or probably, you know, depending on the Blender version, this might not even be needed, we're actually going to get subdivision and uh, micro displacement. So I'm going to hit Shift Z again, let it tessellate and compute. And there we go. Now, the thing about these textures, and especially these displacement maps, is there's one more important thing that we've forgotten. And if you look at the terrain now, it's sort of the peaks are up very, very high, and everything else is sort of flattened out a little bit. And you get this really weird sort of spiky shape. Now, the reason for that is um, when using displacement maps, you might want to use non-color data. Uh, that way there's no gamma correction being applied to the colors coming from the image texture and you can just get the raw values. When it reads that into the multiply node and pipes it into displacement, what you'll see is that now we actually get the correct looking displacement. Now that being said, um, it doesn't really matter what you do. Uh, if you like the look of it set to color, then go for it. I mean, um, obviously any sort of artistic use uh, is up to you. But I just want to show you how to set it up correctly so they actually look the same as they do in the reference images. Now, with that set up, um, there's one or two more things that you can try. Generally, what I tend to do is sometimes I set these to both. Now, there's sort of pros and cons to this. The pro is that you don't need to subdivide as much and you still get all of that really nice crispy detail from the 8K textures. 
the um, downside to that is because I'm using these really hardcore values uh, that are quite high for bump map, you'll see even from far away sometimes sort of this weird blackness going on in the um, in the landscape. So you can use that to add more bump or you can use uh, an extra normal map or bump map or whatever on top to make that all work. But this is a very quick trick to get a little bit more um, sort of a little bit more from that one map, especially if you're from further away, you don't really notice the artifacts and you get some really nice crisp results. Now, that being said, I'm not completely done yet. I wanna show you one more thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm grab another image texture. There we go. And I'm going to grab the flow map as an example. So this could be applied to both the flow and the height maps. And my height maps, I mean height mask really, because these are more meant as masks. So I have a UV, if I just uh, view this flow map really quickly, you'll see that it's all kinds of crazy. And at first glance, you might think that um, it's totally not worth using because it doesn't really make any sense. But the way I've done these is rather than bake in some stuff that you, um, you know, that you always have to use time and time again, I wanted to give people flexibility by using primary colors and mixing them together. So that means if we use this separate RGB node, now all of a sudden these start making a lot more sense. So you get these really interesting maps, um, depending on some of the flows and things in the landscape that you can use as masks to maybe, you know, um, I guess mix different shaders or textures or whatever. So these give you a lot more control over what you want to do. And you could even use these as bump maps to get really kind of crazy and creative. Um, so that about does it for this very quick overview. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. So in the comments on, if you're watching this on YouTube, or hit me up on social media or whatever, um, I'll be happy to answer them. So this concludes the very, very quick overview on how to use these. Um, I hope you enjoy using them as much as I enjoyed making them. Definitely check out the Blender files. There's a bunch of examples with the texture pack um, that you can open up. Everything's public domain, so you can just do whatever you want with them. Um, that way it makes it a lot easier to use them for any kind of project. And uh, yeah, that's it. So enjoy and thanks for watching.